Terminals are one of the most essential tools for developers. So far I've been using iTerm and Hyper on the MacBook, but I'm always on the lookout for something new. I want both a terminal that looks great and that stands out with features in some way from what's already been out there for a long time. Recently I discovered Warp. It's a terminal that not only looks great, but also uses AI to enrich your workflow. It is still in public beta though, so there could be some issues, but it already looks very promising. So let's get a first glimpse into Warp. Okay, so here we are in the warp terminal and let's start with some basic features. So for example, the warp terminal has this concept of blocks. So if I were to just do an ls command and here you can see the grouping of the input command that I just did and the outputs that I got after running this command, this is called a block in, in uh, warp. In this case, you can also go and access the context menu of a block. And here you can do certain things with, the, with that block. So for example, copy command, copy output, copy both, like create permalink, that's about sharing. Uh, we'll talk about sharing later. And then for example, if I were to do some kind of command that outputs an error, like this, you can see now that the whole block turned red, which is quite a nice feature as well. Some other basic features in warp are, for example, if I were to do some kind of long output like this, um, so let's see, like library, yeah. Um, so now I can scroll up, but notice that when I scroll up, I can see this pinned to the top. And this was the command that I ran that's corresponding to, to this block that we're currently sc scrolling in, which is uh, really cool because I don't have to like scroll all the way up to see what command I ran. And then also like notice that there is a prompt uh, pinned to the bottom. So for example, if I were to scroll up and refer to something that was in the output. For example, I want to go to the music directory right here. I would type right here and I can see what I'm typing uh, as I'm browsing and looking through the history of the output. Another thing I can do is I can scroll up and browse the blocks using command up or command down keys. I can also split the panes like with the uh, command D like this. Or I can, for example, find previously executed commands with uh, control R and then start typing. And then I can, you can see I have a history of Git commands right here that I can browse through using the arrow keys. Another nice thing about warp is that I can actually go and uh, change the theme. So I can change how visually warp looks like. I can go to the settings, then I can go to appearance. And here you can see I can click on this right here, and I can browse through different themes. So we have light theme, uh, Dracula theme, which is my favorite, Solarized Dark, also available, Grovebox, uh, yeah, some other themes, which is quite nice if you want to switch it up a bit. I'll just stick to Dr Dracula right here. So let's talk about block sharing. So for example, if I want to share the output of the terminal with someone, I would need to ordinarily just copy paste everything or I would probably take a screenshot or something. Now that's very tedious to do and in addition to that, uh, someone else cannot copy paste the contents of this output as well if it's a screenshot or you lose syntax highlighting and that sort of stuff if you just copy paste. You struggle with formatting and those kind of things. So what warp enables you to do is actually to share a block. So if you access a block's context menu like this and you choose create permalink and now you can choose create and copy link and over here you can see that the publicly available URL was created 
and you can just copy it over and then send it to someone. And that, that someone can just like access a browser, type in that link or copy or paste it. And then as you can see here, we have an output of that same block and they can, they can go over and copy snippet or copy the link again and share it with someone else and so on. As you can see here, all the syntax uh, highlighting was preserved, all the formatting, and also the line numbers are right here. Also, if you wanted to now unshare this link, you would go to settings, you would go to shared blocks, and right here you have all the blocks that you shared, and you can access the context menu and unshare. Just click unshare. And it's gone. If you access this link again, let's refresh this and you can see it's gone, it doesn't exist anymore. Next up, workflows, another cool warp feature where workflow, you can think of it as a series of commands to achieve a specific outcome. And there are different types of work workflows. One of them is, for example, a community built workflow. And you can access them by pressing Control shift r And over here, you can either browse them on the left, choosing the topic, or you can uh, search through them. So you can do, for example, if I want to know how to create um, a new Git remote branch, uh, create new Git remote branch right here, I have the search at the top and I press enter. And as you can see here, I uh, have two commands that are part of this workflow. And one parameter is branch name right here. And the other one is remote name. And uh, they're over here. And I can actually cycle through them by pressing shift tab. And I can change them. So if I wanted to change the branch name of the branch that I want to create in the remote repository, I would say, for example, new branch. And then shift tab. And then the name of the remote. It can be anything pretty much, like dev. And then I will just press enter and that will execute this this workflow. So that's how you do workflows, uh, at least the community ones. And uh, there are other types of workflows which you can build yourself, of course. And uh, they're either stored locally only to you, or you can create a workflow that will be a part of like um, a Git repository that you're working on, and then it will be shared with the team you're working with. So um, for example, here, I have my own workflow created in my home directory. You can see it right here. It's essentially a YAML file that adheres to a specific format. Uh, so you can see it right here. The name of it is rebase current branch on dev. And what it does is runs two commands, one to fetch um, the changes from the remote repository and then a git rebase command that will rebase the branch you're currently on, on dev. So that's it. And I can also access them by using control shift R and then saying rebase current branch on dev and it's right here. If I press enter, boom, there you go. All right, uh, let's import this. You can check out the format of this YAML file and how you build workflows in the official Warp doc documentation that's available on the web. Now, another really, really cool thing about Warp is it utilizes AI features to enhance your workflow. So, for example, one can generate commands using natural language. So let me show you an example of that. So if I press Control backtick, I can now type in a natural language to get a command. So um, let's try show me how much disk free space I have in a human readable format. Enter. And there we go. Uh, we have a suggested command right here. We can just press command enter and it will generate it here. And then we just press enter again and boom, there we go. Pretty cool, huh? Another way we can utilize uh, the AI in Warp is sort of like in ChatGPT. You can do a prompt of any sort whatsoever from within Warp 
in order to do that, just press uh, control space. And here we get the prompt. And now we can ask it a question, any question whatsoever. So recently I wanted to understand how to mod modify a git pre-commit hook so that it's ignored if a commit message starts with a specific string. So let's ask it. How do I modify a git pre-commit hook so it's ignored if a commit message starts with a specific string? And now it's generating the answer. And there we go. Pretty neat, huh? It would just like take me for at least probably a minute to Google that, find it somewhere on Stack Overflow. But now I just do it right here from within the terminal. Isn't that cool? So, and I can also just copy the code to clipboard and I can paste it in here if I want or whatever I'm editing. Right, just bear in mind that you actually have limited number of requests. Although a hundred requests per day, like per 24 hours is quite a nice limit. It's, you don't reach it so often, right? So you might be asking yourself like, what's the pricing for all of this? Well, let's check it out. We close this and let's go to pricing. And as you can see, like for individual use, it's pretty much free. So, and it has all the block creation, AI command search, AI features, all of this is, and workflows, everything is for free, at least for now. Although they do claim that the individual plan is always going to be free and that they're going to be funding themselves with uh, pricing from the team plans. So it's a good reason to just keep on using it and see how it's going to evolve. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.